We're starting in a new series and we're so excited because it's a topic, it all, it just concerns all of you, all of us. Check, check, yeah. Check, now, now. I'm, I'm back in the game. You're back. Woo. The title of the message is, All You Need Is Love. Da, 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 da. You can do it better. All you need is love. Da, 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 da. Yeah, <laughs> and we're excited to talk about relationships. Hey, please be seated. It's going to oh, yeah. last uh, 28 minutes, so yeah. <laughs> we'll be tiring. A bit longer bit. than our relationship, no, shorter than our relationship, actually. <laughs> it's been lasting for 22 years of marriage and um, 25 years of love. And we all know what it's like in relationships. Sometimes you're really in, in a little fight, you know? And yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. you're compromising. You say, okay, I come your way for two, three, four steps. And now you come my way for another four. <laughs> or you don't come. Okay, okay you have to come. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's okay. the way relationships can uh -huh. go. <laughs> yeah. We want to talk about, um, today we want to talk about uh, a mystery, actually coming from the Bible, but before we get there, I want to say a few words why we talk about relationships in ICF. Why have we been doing this every year, a series about relationships? Maybe you thought, okay, I just started to love the guy, but now he's talking about relationships, you know. Some men, they really get a bit uh, of tension in their skin because when you talk about relationship, they feel guilty already. I don't know why. <laughs> so relax, everybody. Um, you know, because... Why do we talk about relationships? It's because the Bible is full of verses, of commandments, of, of, uh, of lifestyle help, actually, how to live love, how to love in, in friendships, how to love in marriage. And it's even full of romantic, even erotic details, how to love your partner, as you can see on the screen. And on the other hand, like Karl Barth said, in one hand, you have to have the Bible, and the other hand, you have to read the news. And if you read the news, we all know that relationships, they seem as we are really professionals about it because we live in them every single day, but we are actually not really good at it because everything is getting worse. More, more um, people are getting divorced, more people have stress, more people are, are um, having, uh, experiencing violence in their relationships. So it's not that easy as it seems. That's why we talk about it, okay? And the title today is How Happy Relationships Work. How do I make a relationship happy? How can I make it work? The mystery actually starts in, in, um, in John, in John uh, chapter 17 or 13. You can read it up on the screen. When Jesus had... Passover with his friends, he had a really revolutionary moment where he said, I will bring you a new commandment. And if you do that in a Jewish atmosphere, in a Jewish um, environment, that's really, that's really a thing. Because Jewish people know you can do everything with commandments, with the law, you can discuss it, you can interpret it, but you can't add a new one. And that's actually what Jesus did. He said, I add a new commandment for you, love each other. And that was not the new part. The new part is, as I loved you, you shall love each other. And this is the new commandment of love Jesus gives. And it, it contains a mystery that we will unveil together what it means for us in marriage, in friendships, and so on. Yes. So when it comes to relationship, we all have a box with hopes, dreams, and expectations. And maybe you're single, you just start to discover what you want to put in this box, or you go, go are engaged, and then you're talking about what you want to put in, and you really like to talk about it and to share. Or you're married, like for example us, we are since, uh, married since 20 years, so you better should know what's in the box of your partner, Otherwise, maybe that's uh, one kind of a problem. So <laughs> we have these boxes, you know, um, all these dreams, and there is money, for example. You think like, when we get together, we have double income, that's great. We can afford everything I was wishing. Or for example, your best friend, she's having a very nice job and you're gonna eat, gonna go out for dinner with her. And you think, oh, maybe she's gonna pay because she has the better job than I have. <laughs> because I'm a student, so I hope she's gonna pay. 
Good yeah. hopes. <laughs> Some people, they hope about time. If you go into marriage, you maybe think to yourself, when I'm going to be married, I will spend every single day, every single hour from Monday onto Sunday together with my beautiful partner, and we will spend all the time together. And it will clash with the other hopes of maybe your husband who thinks, when I'll be married, I have to compensate and I have to need four or five evenings with my bodies to compensate all the time I spend with my wife. Oh, yes. Ooh. So, what else? <laughs> we have work. Yeah, we, we share work, you know. I'm in a job and I'm going to have my career uh, done and my husband stays at home and looks after the kids. Or maybe you just started a new, a new um, enterprise with your friend and you just look that she's doing her thing and you do your thing and it's all organized and really nice done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people have like a, a map of the whole globe hanging above their beds. Who, does, who has that? <laughs> maybe in your lead. Oh, Marian, thank you. And some people, they dream about having a pin in every single country of this planet and um, to pin it because you've been traveling there. So who's dreaming that? There's a few of you, yeah. The international community is more into that. And it might clash with the dreams and hopes of your partner who thinks all that I need is my chimine, you know, a little fire in my living room and maybe the garden and I will stay home all year long. Oh. It's not you, right? Not me, no. <laughs> I, I like to discover the world. Yeah, me too. And what's this? This stays for our conflict. Yeah, you know, when I'm in a relationship, we need to battle and then we need to have conflicts and really bring out of each other what's in, in the deepest problem and then we can discuss and solve it. Or maybe you say, no, conflicts, I, I don't like conflicts. I go in my room, I think about it, I come out of my room and then we pray together. I like your voice, baby. It's, uh, <laughs> so soft. Can't imagine you saying that. <laughs> Come on. Uh, did, I, did, did, did I say that? Okay. Maybe it's your dream or your thoughts that you think, my grandma's pyjama will please my husband so much and he will accept me the way I am. If I come like this in my wedding night and I jump in the bed, he will love me for that, okay? That might be your dream, your hope, your desire, but it could clash with the hopes and dreams of your husband who's imagining you wearing the hot dresses every day just for him. You know, you can feel the tension here with our hopes, dreams and desires. We all have that. And we walk around with our hopes, dreams, and desires, and we are looking around to find a friend who will help us realize what we're dreaming of. And we're looking around for a boss who will help us realize it, for employees who will help realize it, or a love partner like um, a beautiful wife or a beautiful husband who will help us bear all the hope, dreams, and desires who help us realize it. I found you. And now we are two people realizing my hopes, my dreams, and my desires. Thank you so much for yeah, joining very, me. Yeah. And as you can see, when I put that on her, it doesn't feel like light hopes and dreams. It feels like a big weight of expectations. And they come and they don't feel as excited as they feel in my hands. So that's what we actually do. And I want to make sure you ask yourself the question, what is in my box? What is in my box of dreams, hopes, and desires? Because it's important to know about yourself. Thank you for helping me, baby. You're welcome. I'm getting rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when two egos collide, we can act in four different ways. We can just run away like, no. These are not my, I mean, you didn't fulfill my expectation. I'm gone. We didn't, we didn't fix that like that. No, 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 no. It's fine. I'm gone. But you know what? I think if you go out of a relationship like that, might be that this expectation box will, you will bring it to another, to the next person you're going to be together. So that could be tricky. And the other way we can react is, 
the winner type, you know? It's in a relationship, there's always a, a winner type of person. The one who wants always to win. I'm not uh, telling you which one of us is how, but uh, you can guess, I, I leave it to you. But there's always a competition like, you know, if you would have my dreams and uh, an expectation, you would live such better life. I mean, do you know, look at your parents. I mean, they, really, they, they didn't really get it together, so I, I wouldn't take, try this way, try my way. I'm much stronger, and I, I, I fulfill my, all my wishes and dreams and expectations, and this is really the way you should do it. So this is the winner type. Also a little bit difficult. Uh, yes, that's difficult. <laughs> the third type, uh, what happens when egos clash, it's that one of them will conform, uh, adjust to the other, and you will start conforming and um, start to adjust to the other one so it fits together, and you, you start to compromise to yourself. You start to change your hopes, your dreams, your desires, and they get smaller and smaller. And in the end, you don't even feel them yourself. And you lose actually your God-given personality, your talents, everything. You put it aside just to adjust and conform with your opposite partner. And that is actually not godly. And what happens, the tension in your relationship drops to zero because it's not attractive to be conformed. It's not attractive to, to be a different ego, to be a different person than God designed you to be. That's the third point. And the fourth uh, way you can act is actually you compromise. You start to compromise with each other. You start to have deals in your relationships, friendships, and marriages. Start to have deals. You say maybe from Monday to Wednesday, I gonna take care of the kids, and from Thursday to Sundays, it's you, and everything that you do is like a contract you do. I go three steps to the right, so you can do three steps to the left, and we'll meet in the middle. And that's actually what many people think that's the perfect way of dealing with relationship or marriage. And it's, it's just a contract, it's business, it's not romantic, it's not nice. You lose what God had in store for you. There is much more than just a compromised relationship. And we can dis discover it and unveil this mystery that God imagined how it could be. Yes, because expectations, they create this depth, depth uh, um, atmosphere. And it's not nice. It's always, you owe me something. It's not nice. And it really closes up the, the environment for love. Love cannot be recognized or lived in an uh, environment which is always with expectations. Mm. Do you feel what I mean? I mean, you, you, you go online, you uh, take your package, uh, you order something, and then a post guy brings it to your home, and you will not fall on your knees, thank you so much. No, because you, you paid for it, you ordered it. So when it's always a, a depth, depth uh, atmosphere in your relationships, how can love be recognized or even, even you can feel or, or give love? It's really difficult. So we discovered that there is a secret and the secret is thankfulness. And thankfulness might open a space for love to be recognized or lived and we, we, we always talk to each other like, don't, don't take me for granted. I love that, that sentence. Don't, l let us not take the other one for granted. Not what he does or, or, or lives or what was also expected. Because we need to, to let love flow, no? So we, um, we installed some, some things we, we share under the week. You yeah. want to start? <laughs> yeah, we... we Sometimes you do it better and uh, sometimes a bit <laughs> we worse. We always work on but it. But we only talk about the better moments now, okay? Yes, of course. <laughs> Come on. Sure. So a few weeks back I was at work and uh, the advantage of my job is she can control whether I'm really at work control. because a, few of, uh, a lot of it is online. She can, she can go online and check is he really working. So I was uh, doing a course for the college and she was um, tuning in and she saw, she saw me and she sent me a screenshot with the following text. You look sexy, love you, baby. And I understood it also, even if it was in English, I understood it. 
And I loved it so much, and it gave so much fire. That was really awesome, baby. I loved yeah. it so much. It's that put good. really fire in my heart, and it made me really go, go um, I don't know, <laughs> not for you. So that's why we deleted everything that was uh, written there. Uh, yeah, that's, that's when, when thankfulness brings something forward. It's a booster, that's, yeah. that's a booster, actually. Yeah, it is. Yes. So the same thing was for me. Uh, I just cleaned the house. You know, we, we have, we have uh, managed it to find out who's doing what. And I do cleaning up the house. Thank and I love, I hope, uh, thank God I love it because I have a big house. So I cleaned up the house and I had to leave for something, for a meeting. And then um, he sent me the text you will see. And you know, Michi started to like this, this detail when I um, fold the toilet paper, he really likes that. <laughs> yeah, it's like in a hotel, you know, yes, I love it. It's like I, in a I hotel. I feel like in luxury. It yeah. says, thank you for, for cleaning my love. Yeah, and it was really for me like, it's so, it's, it makes so much more fun if somebody sees what you did, even though it was expected, even though I owe him this, it, it's, it's such a different atmosphere. So love can flow. Do you feel that? Yes. Yeah. So the question is about expectations. Do, does someone carry your box of expectation? And is that maybe a reason why your love cannot flow or it's, your love is not answered? Yeah. I'll let it drop. It's a good question, actually. And um, this illustration about the boxes of hopes, dreams, desires, and expectations can be used in all kinds of relationships and friendships with a boss, employee, wherever you go in relationships. You can, you can imagine and think about this illustration and bring it there. What, what we want to look at now in the next and the last 10 minutes of the message is we focus more on the marriage because that is what Paul did in Ephesians 5. He took up this new law that Jesus gave. Um, and Jesus said, love each other the way I loved you. And Paul picks it up and he brings it in the context of marriage. And I want to read it with you. Um, I have to get my smartphone here. You can read it on the screen already. The first sentence is, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. That's the first sentence about a Christian marriage. And I love the title, actually, it says a Christian marriage. A Christian marriage has Jesus Christ in the focus, in the center, as the one and only role model. So the way Jesus loved us is the way we should submit each other, submit to each other. So it's actually a competition. It's a submission competition in the marriage. Who can be better in being last? And you, you know, you realize your heart goes wild and your thoughts, they go even wilder if you think about it. And it's exactly what Jesus said, if you want to be first, be last. So a Christian marriage is a competition in submission. And I love about, I love actually in the English, it's even more nice than in German. Every single one in the partnership, in the marriage wants to be first to be last. And then he goes on and he talks to the women first, and I want to read it to you, dear women, what he says about the women. He said, wives, submit yourself to your own husbands as you do to the Lord, and so on. This is about the submission to your husbands. Now you think, oh my gosh, that's, now he brings this sentence. That's exactly the reason why I haven't been to church for 10 years. And now it's the first time I'm back here, even just watching online, and now he brings this sentence. Dear ladies, I'm so sorry, but I want to take it further with you because this is just the first part, and it's actually just one part. What Sarah and I did, we did a study, and we did an analysis about, um, uh, about the marriages, and we were wondering how many husbands are actually worth it that their wives submit to them, And we did uh, a study just with one a guy testing, and it was me. <laughs> and we came to the result about the percentage, it was this number. 
zero percent. <laughs> so no husband is actually really worth it that uh, his, wife, his wife is submitting to him. It's just the way God put it. It's a godly order that he installed. And I want to say another thing to you wives and women. If you go back in history, there's one person that installed a new stand for women all over this world through his ministry. Through the ministry when he was on this earth, when he died, when he was, was resurrected, he gave a new stand to the women just like nobody else before. And in all the countries where Christianity was important throughout the last hundreds of years, you can see that it made a difference. And this one person, his name is Jesus Christ. So let us give a hand, the ladies first, but also the men, to this wonderful person, Jesus Christ. And I think all the women on the planet should follow Jesus just for this reason, actually. So that was the first, uh, first part. What uh, does the Bible say about Christian marriage to the wives? And then comes the revolutionary thought, what Paul did here. He was actually very smart. He talked to the women first because he was sure when, when I talk about the women first and the men here, that I tell the women to submit to the husbands, they will say, oh, yes, that's right. Oh, yes. I always said that. And, you know, in, in the culture, in this, in this season then, in this age, it was even so that the husbands were the owners of their wives. They owned them with body and soul. They, they belonged to him. So that was a no-brainer, the first part. It's only challenging for us now. But what Paul then says to the husbands, he says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. So we husbands should submit to our wives in a way that we give our lives for them. So you give your hopes, you give your dreams and your desires up to serve your wife. And that was really jaw-dropping news for those Jewish people then. And as I look through the rows, it's even still today. <laughs> it's a challenge. But what marriage is, is a submission challenge, a submission competition. And I give everything in to the marriage to serve my wife, to put her first. And she gives everything in to put me as her husband first. Yes, so... What, what about our expectations? What do we do? We have to bring everything back to this box. We have to put it back, everything back. All the money, <laughs> here you go. We have to put it back. And the big question is, do I owe you something? No. I. You don't owe me something, but I owe you everything. This makes this Christian thought of Jesus come alive in the relationship. I, you don't owe me anything, but I owe you everything. And the all-in question here is, what is in your box? What's in your box? I want to know what are your hopes, dreams, and desires. I want to know what's in your heart. I, you are interesting me. I love you. I want to know it. This makes it really, really strong. Yes. Yeah, the problem is when you ask that question, you should be ready to have um, surprising reactions. <laughs> Don't uh, ask the questions on your way back home. What is, what is in your box, <laughs> honey? Do it. Because you think it's an easy question, but if you ask that your husband... Dear wives, it could happen that he gets like this empty face, starts to think, and he will say, do I have a box? <laughs> what is in there? Uh, nothing. <laughs> it's like the nothing box in our men's world. Somehow it, it's, it's difficult to, to answer it. So you, you might find the nothing box in, in your husband, and you have to give him time. He will find it. And oftentimes, we men, we even are afraid. And that is deep because we don't seem to be afraid. But this question, what is in your heart for hopes, dreams, and desires? It could be that 
men are afraid to be really honest about it. So give time when you ask the question. Don't ask it while you're driving and just dropping the question. What yeah. about the women? Well, the women, if you ask us women, then maybe we're going to faint like, oh, you asked this question. I was expecting it for so long. <laughs> or you like ask the question and then she's getting angry. 29 years I'm married with you and now you ask me this question. How can you wait so long? So be easy. Just calm down. Wait. Because she's maybe, it's maybe the first time you ask her. So we have to have patience. And we, we're sure you need to go through this. You need to go to ask what is, what is your dreams because I'm interested to you. I, I really want to know it. But you I don't, you don't owe me anything, and I owe you everything. So amazing when the expectation box is empty. We want to finish the message by picking up the rope yeah. again, <laughs> just to show you an illustration what Paul actually talked about in marriage. When we start to be in a submission competition, and there's a bit of a tension, it's, it's Yes, thank you. Yeah, and um, we pull and we make our steps. Sometimes it fights and whatever. And what Jesus actually says in this new law, he says, you have to be the one who goes first by dropping your end of the rope. If you want to be the one who submits first, be the first one not to put your expectations, your dreams, hopes, and desires to the uh, person you married, but you will go first by serving her and dropping your rope by saying, I let go. I believe God gives me everything and I won't put it on you. And that's the moment where we are exactly like Jesus. That's what Jesus did. He left everything to be here and serve us and be the first one to drop the rope of his royalty and serve us like a servant. And to be in a marriage and be like Jesus, it means you let go, you let your rope, the end of your rope, drop. Now you might say, come on, I'm, I have so many errors in my head. I just have a, a, yeah, I don't know, I'm afraid, I'm actually scared. That might be the, the cry in your heart, I'm scared to let go. Yeah, I am scared, I'm really scared. I'm afraid that if I let go my end, so there's no tension anymore. There's, there's nothing that maybe my expectation, he wouldn't fulfill it and then just go away or go his way and then it's not floating anymore. And I'm afraid to let go. But why are we so afraid? I am afraid because my ego is so big. My ego is big. My ego is too big. What can I lose? I mean, what can I lose? If I, if I let it go, it's just that Jesus will fill all that my, I need, would give me everything I need to be a good wife to Michi. He, I can let go, but it's a point where I'm really sometimes afraid. I have the thinking in, me, in myself that if I hold on it, so it keeps like our relationship alive. But maybe it's the thing I said that it's, it will kill off the, the love that it cannot be recognized or lived. So I, leave, I have to really let go my ego. I have to let go of what I think I, you owe me. Mm. So that's a big point. And I really think you might, might, might meet me in these in this thinkings. And I think we're, we're challenged to let go our egos in, in relationships because otherwise it cannot flow. It's just the way it is. If you have a look at me, it's also a bit strange. If one person goes first, it's most of the times it's the way that one person goes first and she lets go and she follows Jesus in the way to love me, the way he loved her. And it, doesn't it look awkward that I still hold on to my rope? I mean, I can pull here and I will go somewhere and lose her if I still pull. It's, it's actually awkward. And I think what, what Jesus wants us to challenge it with, challenge with this afternoon is that we really follow him. I feel this urge in my heart that Jesus wants followers. And he was the first one to drop his end. Imagine him 
in the Garden of Gethsemane, the evening before he knew he would, was going to be crucified the next day, he was so scared that blood came out of his skin. Drops of blood fell on the floor because he was so much afraid of what was going to happen the next day. But he still went. He still dropped his end of the rope. Maybe you think there's no hope, there's no future. We've tried it so many times. But there is no hope until you let go of your rope. There's no hope until you let go of the end of your rope. Because there, when you let go, you can receive from God. And in this situation, with empty hands, we are like Jesus. And it's exactly this moment when you're afraid, you walk in faith. That's the moment when you're more alike Jesus than in any other situations, because he is and he was a servant. He serves us. He went first. He let go. And I believe that we Christians, we're the first one to follow him. We are the ones who follow in the dust of this rabbi who went first and we want to be like him also in our marriages. And if our marriages are, are, are in the way that like God loves us in this giving up love, in this self denying love, there's so much power in our marriages. And I think God is really longing for that. And it's not just the marriages, it's also the way we live in friendships, that we are the people to let go because we know we don't have to care for ourselves. We don't have to hold on and take care for our own lives, even as a single. You can let go and make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, and then you believe that he will care for you. That's actually the first step you have to go don't have to talk about Christian marriage as long as you're not a Christian. If you're not really a Christian, you don't let go of your rope, you're self-caring and you're lost in it. And I believe today Jesus invites us all to be like him. First by letting go our life and then letting go the end of the rope in our relationships. Hey, thanks for watching. Hey, our passion for people is that we see them grow in their relationship with Jesus, live fearlessly and influence their people and the surrounding in a positive way. And if you would like to be part of that vision, we thank you so much for your financial support because that would make it possible. I hope that this message spoke to you really. And if you don't have subscribed to our channel, please do this. And it's always a big blessing. Maybe you know some people in your neighborhood or in your friendship say that podcast could be a very well cool thing just share the link because it's pretty pretty easy and I'm looking forward to see you again tune in and God bless you and see you soon bye bye